Okay, here we we have this divide going on. So we have the Delacroix with the action and the and the energy and the feeling, um, trying to give this real living quality to it. And then we have the contrast with the Angra and the Bouguereau, where it's is uh, very finished, very finished, very detailed. And and the French impressionist uh, Monet uh, being one of them, they just couldn't stand it. They're like, this is not real. We have to go outside and see what's really happening. Get out of the studio. Don't construct all our stuff in the studio. Get out, go out into real, the real world and see what's going on. And Monet uh, is uh, developed color theory by the style of, that he was working out of really analyzing what what's going on what color is it what are, what am i really seeing and when uh, artists take things into the studio they tend to uh, plate uh, become a little bit platonic they tend to idealize it in their heads without ex examining seeing it anymore so the french impression is like no 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 go out there feel the wind feel the rain hear the sounds we want to start capturing vitality of life. And that starts setting up a whole nother way of approaching art. Um, one of the things is that um, is made famous by Cezanne that you could only paint for half an hour. And then the sun would be changing and you'd have to stop. So you'd come back the next day at the same time to see it. So you would make outside your studio, but it had, it had problems because the light didn't stay in the same place or you didn't have a window with it just coming in from one direction, like in the Vermeer painting. So the Impressionists had to kind of develop a whole system of how do we cope with nature? How do we understand it better so that we can bring some of its truth and its reality into our paintings? Um, in the water lilies here, we have um, Monet going crazy with having fun with reflections because actually light and color is all reflections anyway. The light's reflecting on objects, and so he's like then taking it into a, a metaphysical state. Like reflections are how things work. That's how we see. We see light on things. What happens if we have real reflections? And then he's just really having a field day with that. He's a, a master of nuance of color, of uh, not repeating colors. So that if you get a blue, the blues have millions of variations, and he changes each each of the mark uh, the brush strokes. So you think, oh, I've got blue paint. I'm going to take uh, robin's egg blue and just spray it on and put it on. And he's like, no, no, no. We're going to take a little pink. We're going to take a little green. We're going to mix these in. And so they were finding that uh, one of the great great developments there was that the Impressionists were intuitive or figuring out that the way the human eye works is we need to see nuance. If we see too much of the same stuff, we get bored. And that's what happens with studio artists is they tend to using the same colors for too many things. So going outside and seeing it and seeing the difference in space, seeing the difference in, in uh, um, depth, um, would well the blue here out in front is different than the blue that's a little bit further back what's the difference how do i change the color so it's not just making it a lighter blue or a darker blue it's like making it a whole new kind of set of blue and so that's tremendous work um and also there's a consequence of that is that by having all these different colors extending their palette mixing all the stuff up it makes it a little bit hard to get a blended finished look so uh, it, by its nature, it starts setting up a whole nother style, and it continues that tradition of Delacroix, of the energy and the excitement. And so the French impression said, we don't need to make it look finished real. We need to make the light feel real. We need to make the environment feel real by its color.